this thing on? Okay, cue exciting podcast intro. We were created carefully by a creative creator who crafted the cosmos. He caressed the soul of the earth when he came. A baby, crying in a crib that darkness could not comprehend. And then he grew and did his most creative act yet. He painted us red, marking us clean with his death. And he rose again, giving us new threads, so you could look like him, friend. Creative and called. You are more like God than you've been told. Welcome to the Unboxed, Called and Creative Podcast. Hey there, welcome back to another episode of Unboxed, Called and Creative Podcast. Um, I'm your host, Iman the Messenger, aka uh, Emmanuel Borges the Silver. Um, and for those who are here for the first time, uh, essentially on this channel or on this podcast, uh, we speak about all things faith, all things callings, all things creativity, um, and whatever else the Lord would like us to talk about. Uh, for those of you who are returning, God bless you. Um, as I always say, how are you? How are you doing? Uh, do you have any prayer requests? Please put them in the comments on YouTube. Um, and yeah, I, I pray that you're good. I pray that you're well. Um, I pray that this episode it, it will really encourage you. Um, I pray that this episode will edify you and, and cause you to think about um, how you are unifying yourself with the rest of the body of Christ, you know? Um, we live in a time where our faith is very individualistic and we don't tend to consider um, how important our role is in the body of Christ um, and the holistic picture um, that Jesus came to paint, you know, with his death, burial and resurrection um, and adopting us into a body. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. You know, as the title says, uh, competition in the body of Christ. Um, <laughs> it, it's, it's funny because even as I say that, it sounds like such a backwards thing. But it's so prevalent in the body. There is so much competition. There is so much comparison. Uh, there are so many clicks and all kinds of ways that essentially all kinds of stumbling blocks and obstacles that stop us from loving each other, from doing what Jesus said, which is um, love one another, right? Uh, the world will know that you are my disciples. Like they will know that you are my body if you love one another. Um, and so we're going to get into that today. Um, we're going to read a few scriptures. And then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, slowly break down these scriptures um, and talk about um, how it relates to us. I mean, I believe that the Lord is going to speak. God has been speaking to me uh, quite strongly about this um, recently. And um, I think it will really, really benefit uh, us. But yeah, please, if you are new, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, follow the podcast on whatever streaming platform that you listen on, whether it be Apple, Spotify, uh, Amazon, wherever, right? And also give us a review, right, by the end of this episode. Um, that really helps more people who are unboxed, uh, called and creative to find this podcast, be edified, be encouraged, um, and also take these messages and these gems with them into their spheres of influence, Um blessing the world around them as well so thank you thank you thank you so much um let's look at the scriptures so we're going to look at uh first corinthians 12 verses 12 to 27 i'll say it again first corinthians 12 verses 12 to 27 cool for just as the body is one and yet has many parts and all the parts of the body though they are many are one body 
so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. For the body is not one part, but many. If the foot says, because I am not a hand, I am not a part of the body, it is not for this reason any less a part of the body. And if the ear says, because I am not an eye, I am not a part of the body. It is not for this reason any, any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But now God has arranged the parts, each one of them in the body, just as he desired. If they were all one part, where would the body be? But now there are many parts, but one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Or again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, it is much truer that the parts of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those parts of the body which we consider less honourable, on these we bestow greater honour, and our less presentable parts become much more presentable. Whereas our presentable parts have no need of it. But God has so composed the body, giving more abundant honour to, to that part which it lacked, so that there may be no division in the body, but that the parts may have the same care for one another. And if one part of the body suffers, all the parts suffer with it. If a part is honoured, all the parts rejoice with it. Now you are Christ's body and individually parts of it. Wow, so that's, it's a really long scripture. That's about 15 verses, right? Um, of Paul talking about, the Apostle Paul, talking about the body of Christ talking about how we function together, uh, talking about um, our need for one another, right? Um, <clears throat> and so let's go through this slowly. For just as the body is one and yet has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though they are many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we were baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and we were all made to drink from one spirit. So this is a really good foundational point to kind of start on, right? The Bible makes it clear here that we are members of one body, okay? And that one body is Jesus Christ's body, okay? It's his body. It's his body. Whether Jew or Greek, slave or free, I mean, you could put anything in there, whether male or female, uh, whether a singer or a janitor, whether an accountant or a uh, an actor whatever it is right like there is no hierarchy in the body in terms of our actual significance our functions look different but there is no function that is more important than another function and he even says it later here that even the functions that are that seem to be less than are actually very, very, very important because the other parts of the body can't do that function. And if that small function is not done, it can have a very big effect on the whole body, right? Keep that in, in, in mind as we're tracking. So we're all baptized into one body, into one by one spirit. We all drink of that one spirit, right? We are one together. Now from verses 14, it says, for the body is not one part, but many. If the foot says, because I am not a hand, I am not a part of the body, it is not for this reason any less a part of the body. Similarly, the eye. If the eye said, sorry, not eye, the ear. If the ear says, because I am not an eye, I am not a part of the body. It is not for this reason any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? And if the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? Beautiful. Now, you know, relating this to us as a, 
called and creative people or unboxed called and creative people. It's such an interesting thing to me. It's, it's a wonder to God, I'm sure, as to why we give hierarchy to our functions. When the Bible here is really clear that like, not all of us have the same function, right? Not all of us have the same function. And, and, and here we see kind of two camps of people that I want to address or the Lord wants to address, right? In this, through this scripture. One camp of person is the, um, is the person who doesn't deem themselves as a part of the body of Christ or significant in the body of Christ because they aren't like somebody else. Oftentimes, this tends to be the called and creative people who have gifts that are more background gifts than forefront gifts, right? Some people, their role in the kingdom is just to intercede for someone, literally just to, in the background, just pray for a person who is at the forefront. And oftentimes, people tend to give that up because it doesn't look as big and glamorous as the guy who's preaching on the pulpit or on the platform. The Lord does not see it this way. And we ought to not see it this way as well. He completely does not see it this way. Okay? In the end of the day, when we stand before Jesus, he's not going to ask us about what we did in his name. He's going to ask us whether he knew us whether we did what he told us to do and how well we did that. We're going to be very shocked on the final day when um, we see people who we've never seen before in our lives getting more honor, more glory, more crowns, more uh, real estate, uh, more closeness to Jesus, in the new heaven and new earth than the preachers, the prophets, the whoever, right? The spoken word artists, the singers, um, these people who are at the forefront on earth, we're gonna, we're gonna be very shocked to see that actually there are other people getting more honor than them because the Lord is not looking for how much you do. He's looking for what you do. Okay? That's why it's really important to get this view of the body because what's happened is we have taken cultural, uh, <laughs> cultural van vanity metrics and we've brought them into the kingdom of God. So in the culture, um, the, the culture uh, celebrates meritocracy. The culture celebrates um, exposure, you know, how you look in front of people, all of the things that you're doing, um, how create, how, how expressive you are, how big your creativity is, how big your platform is, how big your audience is. This is these are the things that the culture celebrates. Whereas in the kingdom, the kingdom doesn't celebrate those things. The, the kingdom celebrates, have you been obedient? Have you done what I've asked you to do? How close are you to Jesus? Does Jesus know you really well? Do you hear his voice and do what he says? That's what the kingdom celebrates. The kingdom celebrates submission, whereas the world celebrates domination and how well you are dominating your field and how big you look in, in front of people and how uh, successful you are in the world, how much money you make, how, how big your fame is. And it's really interesting because Jesus actually comes against this mindset just to put us at, at ease. He says, hey, if you seek first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness, then all these other things that the world worries about, you will have freely. Right. So. That fear of. Not having enough, Jesus has already spoken to uh, with us, we're always, we're always going to have what we need, but. It's, it's important that whatever we do, we 
stay obedient. We just do what we're called to actually do. That is what is going to matter in the end, right? And so going back to this scripture, as I said, there are two camps of people. As I said, the, one, the, the first camp of people are the people who don't feel significant, right? So the Bible says here, you know, um, yeah, if the foot says, because I am not a hand, I am not a part of the body, you know, um, it is not for this reason any less a part of the body. And some people feel like that. Some people are the feet and some people, they feel, they feel like um, I'm not a part of the body. Like my role isn't significant. And so they don't take their role seriously because as far as they're concerned, the more, the more serious roles are the people who are preaching on the TV or are preaching on the screens or preaching on the streets or um, healing the sick or casting out devils, you know, resurrecting the dead, whatever it is, right, that people are doing around the, around the world. The people with the covert uh, functions in the body, like the feet, for instance, the feet are covered, the feet, uh, the, feet, the feet walk people to places, but it's the hands that, you know, the hands do certain things. The hands grab things and write with things and, and, and pick up things and put things down. The hands are a lot more visible, right? So it's, it's really interesting that Paul uses that example because you've got like people who are hidden in the body and you've got people who are more visible. And the people who are hidden in the body can feel like they are less significant than those who are visible, and this is not true at all. We need every single part of the body to function. Christ needs his whole body to function. Otherwise, it doesn't work properly. Yes, that preacher is getting exposure. Yes, he's doing this, he's doing that. If no one is praying for him, or if nobody is doing the hospitality side of things, right, then people in the faith aren't maintained. We can have a preacher preaching to people and people can give their lives to Christ one day. But if there's no one doing follow-ups, then it's very, very easy for those converts to fall away. Anyway, right? Because in the end of the day, discipleship is a daily thing. We, you need all the parts of the body doing their part to keep people in the faith to, so that we keep edifying each other and we keep our eyes on Jesus and we make it through this really difficult life, right? Keeping our faith. And so I don't know, what does that look like for you? Maybe you are uh, a hidden part of the body. Maybe you are a visible part of the body. Regardless of what you are, both are very, very important to Jesus. Very important to Jesus. You know, and I find that I find that uh, sometimes those who are hidden parts of the body, they have a lot of criticism to give to visible parts of the body. Like, you know what I'm talking about. We can all gather and we can sit down and tear apart someone's sermon, for instance. We can tear apart those who are at the forefront of Christianity, who have a lot of exposure, a lot of visibility, that God has put them there for that reason, instead of focusing on what we're actually called to do. You know, if, <laughs> if more people focused on whatever their function was, there will be less competition in the body. There'll be less time to tear one another down. There'll be so much less time to do that because you'd be so focused on what God has called you to do. You wouldn't have time to tear down your brother or your sister. And actually, when you are focused on doing what you're, what you're called to do, you see correctly. And so where you see your brother or sister making a mistake, if they're a more visible gift or if they're a more, um, a more, hidden, a more hidden gift or function, you will pray for them. <laughs> you will stand in the gap for them. You won't slander them, right? And so this is why, like, it's really important to have this foundation and really understand scripture and what scripture says about us as a body because there is competition in the body of Christ. And we'll, we'll get to that um, in a minute. But 
that's the first camp of people. The second camp of people is um, those who are visible. You're a visible gift. You're a visible function. You're the hands. You're the, I don't know, you're the eyes. You're, you're whatever, right? And um, you're called to do certain things. Maybe you're, you're, you have creative callings that are on, the, on platforms. So for instance, you are a spoken word artist. You're a singer. Um, you are a um, instrumentalist. You're a preacher. You're a prophet. Um, you're an evangelist. You're an apostle. Uh, you're a teacher of the word of God. You know, whatever gift or function you are, and you're visible. You're visible. Now, I think, not even I think I know, that what has contributed to the competition in the body of Christ is the fact that people who are visible, they speak about their gifts without humility or without understanding the purpose of their gifts. And so sometimes what people do with extroverted gifts is they make other people feel bad about not having the same giftings as them. And it happens in very subtle ways. It could be in sermons where we're talking about oh, you know, you guys should be preaching by now. You should be doing this. Well, no, no not everyone is called to preach, you know? Or, or, or where we make, we make a certain part of the body of Christ just more important. Like we make sermons so much more valuable than hospitality. Or we make worship, worship music, uh, worship musicians. We give them so much more honor than anybody else in the body. And the Bible says that we're supposed to uh, honor everybody above ourselves. So even as a worship leader, you're supposed to be honoring those who have hidden functions even more than you are honored. Yes, the Bible says give honor to whom honor is due. But that, that's actually, if we think about that scripture, everyone is due honor because they're in the body of Christ and they're significant and they're important. And so that's another thing to think about, right? Competition in the body, it, it makes no sense because we were all given our gifts and functions by grace. Before any of us gave our lives to Jesus, we did not have a function in the body. We were out of the body. <laughs> we got grafted into this body and we're freely given these gifts to express Christ in the specific ways that we all need to express Christ individually so that corporately there is a big picture of Jesus all over the world. And some of us have taken that and uh, lost humility. We've, we've taken it and we've developed pride and we've thought to ourselves, hey, yeah, this is me. I did this. And... Uh, other people need to get to my level and all this other weird stuff. When really and truly like your function is by grace. And the question is like, for those who are visible gifts, are you using your function to big yourself up? Or are you using your function to point people to Jesus? Are you using your function like a fishing rod to fish for men and bring them to the Lord? Or are you fishing for men and bringing them to yourself. These are some of the reasons why I believe there is competition in the body. And I believe that this scripture really rectifies that. Let's keep going, right? Um, so verse 18. But now God has arranged the parts, each one of them in the body, just as he desired. Wow, let's talk about that. There's another scripture that talks about the Holy Spirit giving people gifts. And it's, it's quite sad because God decided who was going to get what. But we act as if we were a part of that decision making. We were not. God decided it for a reason. Right? He decided because he wanted to showcase himself through us as parts of one body. We're supposed to be working together. We're supposed to be honoring each other's gifts, honoring all of the gifts, all of the functions of the body, because we need 
all of them. You know, I heard a really funny thing in um, a church that I that I attend sometimes, and uh, the preacher was talking about nose hairs, <laughs> and he was talking about how you know nobody in the body would want to be nose hairs, but well, you know, without nose hairs, you can get very very ill. Without nose hairs, you can get serious infections. Why? Because the nose hairs help to keep bacteria and things out of your body. <laughs> it's cr crazy. Like, the, 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 the parts of the body that seem indecent or seem hidden and aren't uh, on the shelf for everyone to see, they are actually the most important body parts. But we treat the external body parts, we treat the exposed body parts as more important than the hidden ones. And it's wrong. <laughs> it's not right. It's not right. We love, we, we hail worship leaders like idols. We hail preachers like idols. When we really shouldn't be hailing anybody like idols. Everyone should just be, just, just do your function. Don't embellish everything. Just do what you are called to do. You did not get that gift um, by yourself. God gave it to you, you know? And yeah, sorry if I'm, if I'm, I, I can switch. Sometimes I switch between talking generally and addressing certain things. Um, I think it's just the way that God speaks through me but yeah that that's important to to understand it's, it really is it really is like god was the one verse 18 god was the one who arranged the body this way you know and there's a scripture that i'm even remembering now when jesus says to the disciples when a servant does something for the master does the servant expect like a thanks or gratitude from the master no so in the same way when you my disciples do what i ask you to do don't look for any applauds just say we are your servants and we have done what we're supposed to that should be the consensus all over the body that's what jesus christ said he's our savior the head of us said that's what our posture should be like and our posture is not like that at all all around the all around the globe it is in some places but it is not in some places some people really want to be heralded they really want their applauds they really want their uh, their gratitude from people um they really want to be recognized for how well they speak and how well they preach and how what well. it's it's really strange because that gift is not yours even the cultivation and training of it, that's not even, you didn't even do that either. God did that inside of you. The Bible says that God wills in you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. So like we, we've got to be grateful that we even get to use these gifts and serve in whatever capacity that God has given us. Whether you're a preacher or you are a prayer warrior behind closed doors, whether you are the sound tech or whether you are a singer, whether you just order the tea and coffee room, like, or you are um, delivering prophecies every week, it doesn't matter. Do what you are called to do to the best of your ability and God will reward you in glory. Much more than what you think people who are uh, competing against each other in the body are going to get. Christ is so against division and dissensions and these are a lot of the reasons why there is competition in the body and we have to change our mindsets about it so let's keep on going it's a very long scripture we're going to go on to the next scripture because i want to um i want to kind of continue because there's, there's more there's so much more to talk about um a note here that i also made is just this just to kind of summarize what we've spoken about the body is made up of many parts, small and big, but all significant. 
we all need each other to play the role against the kingdom of darkness. And it's funny because in the kingdom of darkness, there's order. <laughs> there's order, there's rank, like everyone knows what they're supposed to be doing and they do it to the best of their ability. But in the kingdom of God, we're trying to compete against each other for podiums and platforms rather than just using the gifts that we've been given in the spaces that we have been called to use them in. This channel could stay at 300 subscribers for the rest of my life. It could go to 1 million. It doesn't matter. As long as I'm doing what God told me to do with my gifts to bless other people, because this isn't about me. I'm here literally breaking down these scriptures to bless the body, to renew minds, to change perceptions, to, to be a conduit for what God wants to say to people. That needs to be the status quo around the body. Not everyone needs a mic. Not everyone needs to cast out devils. Some people, we really, we really need hosp hospitable people. We need people to bring people into their homes. We need some people. We, ne we need Sunday school teachers. We need people who are creative in how they take care of children. Because guess what? Children are the most susceptible to the devices of the enemy. So that is not insignificant at all. That is, that's probably, I would say that taking care of children is more significant than preaching on the podium to adults. Personally. <laughs> now that might just be my opinion. But what I'm trying to say is they're both important. I'm just trying to give a bit more honor to the hidden parts, to the hidden members of the body who may not be receiving the honor that they're supposed to receive. Let's go into Romans 12 verses 3 to 8. It says this, For though the grace given to me, for through the grace given to me, sorry, I'll read that again. Romans 12, 3 to 8. For through the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment, as God has allotted to each a measure of faith. For just as we have many parts in one body, and all the body's parts do not have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually parts of one another. However, since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us is to use them properly. If, proper, if prophecy in proportion to one's faith, if service in the act of serving, or the one who teaches in the act of teaching, or the one who exhorts in the work of exhortation, the one who gives with generosity, the one who is in leadership, with diligence, the one who shows mercy with cheerfulness. I love this. Paul lets us know from the jump, yo, you guys who like are high on your gifts and you're high on your function, calm down. You were given that by God. You did not work for that. You did not train that up. God gave it to you. Whether as a seed or whether as, as it is. He gave it to you. And even the, the working up of it, that's a measure of, of faith that God has given you to work that thing. It has all come from God. The conception of the gift, the training of the gift, all of that has come from God working inside of us. He, he, he makes it very plain and simple, right? Very plain and simple. We are all on the same playing ground. No matter what our gifts look like, it does not matter. God gave us those to use for his glory. And <clears throat> I, just, I just love how he says, you know, with the grace that's been given, each of us should use our gifts properly. Each of us should function in this body in the way that we should function. If it is serving, serve your heart out. Christ will give you the same reward for serving your heart out in serving that he will give me for prophesying uh, according to my faith. Because I've got, for instance, I have, I have the gift of prophecy, for instance. We're going to get the same reward. I'm not going to get more than you. If we both diligently 
Just do what we are called to do. Christ has a reward for all of us doing that in this life and also in the life to come. Because actually what, 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 we, what we reap is, is from what we sow. Right? Jesus even said, he said that anyone who has given up, you know, their life for me will get more in this life and in the life to come. And what was he talking about when he said give up their life for me? He's talking about giving up your life for me and taking on what I've told you to do. Taking on the function I'm giving you. Taking on the new life that I'm giving you. Everyone's new life looks different in Christ because everyone is a different member. And we need each member to work in the way that they're supposed to. Like, you are so significant. I just, you know, I'm really feeling that. Whoever, you know, is listening. You're significant. You don't have to have the extroverted gifts. You don't have to have the visible and exposed gifts. The hidden gifts that are doing work on the background are very important. Without hidden gifts, we do not have longevity in the body of Christ. We don't. Right? You know, and so it's a sad, it's a sad thing that there is competition in the body. And I, I do pray, I really pray that this message, what I'm talking about, you know, if, if you are somebody who is competing, you feel like you're competing in the body, you feel like <laughs> you're competing. This was never a race. This was never a competition against each other. Like Christ needs us to do what we're called to do in order for the big agenda to, to, to take place, in, in order for the movement of, of the kingdom of God to keep going forward. So shift your lens, change your perspective, throw away the cultural vanity metrics. Like the way that we judge things in the culture is completely against the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is flipped upside down. And so you've got to renew your mind. We, we have to renew our minds about this subject because there are, there are too many factions. There are too many dissensions. There are too much, there's too much division. There's too many people trying to one up each other. It's, it's very strange. It's, it's, it's strange. It's like a, a circus right now in the body. And the Bible says that there will be a remnant of people who are actually really devoted to Jesus and de devoted to just doing what they're supposed to do. Be a part of that. Renew your mind. You know, I wrote here, Christians are the only religious people that don't operate by function, but fight for positions and don't complement each other, but compete with each other. <laughs> and how true is this? We can look at other religious groups whether it be Islam, whether it be uh, Hinduism, whether it be uh, Sikhs, I don't know. But they all have order. And they all know who they are in that religion. And they are content. <laughs> Whereas us, we want to be seen so badly or we want to look like someone else so badly that we forfeit our own function. And that is so dangerous. That, mal that, that brings a malfunction to the body of Christ. And it also takes away from your own fulfillment. Because in the gift or function God's given you, he's also given you fulfillment there. Because you're, you're made to do that thing. And so when you don't do what you're made to do, you then feel unfulfilled. That's why even some of you are listening to this now. Like, you've been feeling unfulfilled because you're doing stuff that you have not been called to do. Do what you're called to do. There is joy in what you're called to do, in your function. There is fulfillment in what you are called to do. Know what other people are called to do. And so I want to say this, you know, this last statement. Just because a function looks bigger, it doesn't mean it matters more. Just as we've seen in the previous scriptures, just because a function looks bigger, it doesn't mean that it matters more, Right? My arm is bigger than my finger or my toe. But if I lose a finger or a toe, that can actually disrupt a lot. Losing one toe can change your walking forever. <laughs> you know, losing an arm can also change a lot and how you do things forever. They're both really important. One just looks smaller than the other, but the effect, the effect 
that happens when that little thing is taken away is so important. You are not a little insignificant thing. You are important. You'll find more joy living in your function than living in your fantasy. God sustains functions. We sustain fantasies. Just like what I was saying before, if you are somebody who has been living in a fantasy, you're you're refusing to do what you're called to do. Please, I urge you to repent. I urge you to take up your position. Be at peace with it. Be content with it. This world's metrics mean nothing. They're not real. They're all false. Whoever God has made you to be is really important. So please, don't give up your function. Don't give up what you're supposed to do in the body of Christ. Let's stop competing against each other and let's complement one another. Please, please, please share this message to literally as many Christians as you possibly can, whether they're creative or not. Um, I just believe that this is really timely for the body of Christ. I, I, I feel like God really wants unity. God wants us to be very content in who he's called us to be and not worry about anything else. That's, that's what I truly, truly believe. Please share it. Literally, as I'm talking, please share this video. Um, like it as well so more people can find it. If you're on Spotify, as I said, review um, and all of that stuff. And I'm going to pop up again in about five seconds, uh, you know, talking again. So <laughs> Eman the Messenger, out. Hey, Eman here. I just want to say thank you so much for watching this podcast episode or listening to this podcast episode. Um, we really appreciate it over here. We're just trying to reach as many unboxed, called and creative people as possible. And with you watching it, liking it, sharing it and commenting, this really does help a ton. So please, if you haven't subscribed, if you haven't liked, if you haven't shared, if you haven't commented um, or given the review for the podcast, uh, please, please, please do that uh, now if you can. Okay, till next time.